Hello reformers and welcome to Hand of Fate 2. Yes, I used to play the original version of this game, Hand of Fate 1, a very long time ago. Very much enjoyed it and had a pretty, you know, decently long series with it as well. Anyway, this is the sequel to that and if you'd like to check out the game, then the link is in the description and it is coming out on November 7th. So let's do this. Let's start a new game and uh, see what is awaiting us on the table. Your memories are fading even now, gone to form the soul of the game we play. These pieces are new, as are the stakes. Life, death, and vengeance. We must ride, for time is short, and you have much to learn. Make your first choice, and let us set these wheels in motion once more. These cards represent your history and our game. We know where they end, for you are here. Therefore, these cards must guide you to my side. Let us see what the journey holds. The fool steps into nothingness because they know no better. In the same way, you must step into the void. You are a blank slate and together we will write your history. Alright, so here we are. Yes, our first card is a forest ambush. We start with 100 HP, 5 food, and 10 gold. I'm just gonna access my options real quick just to see if I can enable the subtitles. Alright, that should be a little bit better so we can see what the dealer is saying. Alright, you've stumbled many miles through this forest in search of the thieves who robbed you. Though exhausted and hungry, you are determined to reclaim your father's amulet. You finally catch sight of the thieves hacking at a large tree and arguing among themselves. Move closer or keep your distance? I think we should move closer. Every element of the game has been improved, even those that seem at first glance familiar. Do not worry, you will soon understand the nuances. You try to eavesdrop on the conspiring thieves, but their voices are muffled by the bushes. You shuffle closer to get a better view. You soon spot a group of farmers coming around the corner, bringing their wares to market. The thieves fell the tree into the path of the unsuspecting farmers and leap out, weapons brandished. Give us all your food. Okay, so shall we leap to the farmer's defense? We probably should. You draw your weapon with practiced skill. Well, you hear the leader's voice. You lads handle this. I'll meet you when you're done. Right, so it looks like we have four thieves and three farmers. The thug, violence for the sake of violence and theft for the sake of money. Thieves attack frequently and can evade standard attacks, making heavy weapons less effective. Alright, so here we go. I'm using a controller for this. I'm playing on a PC. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to use that because I, I personally feel like it adds a lot more to the fighting sequences. And that's not to say that you can't use a keyboard. I, I feel like the keyboard is usable. I just prefer a controller. Anyway, let's do it. Alright, I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay, we're going to be defending and doing all... Oh, look at those evasions that they're getting on there. Oh yes, and also, I should probably defend. There's one down, let's bash him. Yeah, there we go, stun that. Alright, it is four against one, and I think... Oh, 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 that was, oh, that was harsh. We took quite a lot of damage there, gotta say. I'm getting used to the combat system again. Very fast paced.
The farmers fumble in their haversacks in gratitude. Thank you, adventurer. I'm sure that after they took our food, they would have taken our lives as well. And we gain seven food. And then five food. Oh, wow, very nice. You fall on the food with a sigh, shoveling bread in your mouth to quell your hunger. Your satisfaction lasts only a moment before you realize your father's amulet is not among the takings. Their leader must still have it. You set to your feet, determined to find him. Right, so find the leader of the thieves and retrieve your amulet. That's what we must do. While enjoying a moment beside the fire, you spy a strange figure approaching your camp. It's a goblin, dressed in what might must pass for goblin finery. From beneath a filthy fox pelt serving as an ill-fitting wig, the goblin winks at you with wild red eyes. Aha, I've been roaming for hours trying to find you. We must get this over with quickly if I have any hope of getting to all the people on my list before sunrise. It lowers a sack from its shoulder. Now, from within my sack I can conjure whatever your heart desires. The goblin's voice trails off as he examines his sack. Well, I could if there wasn't a blooming great big hole in it. His head disappears entirely into the bag and his bulbous nose protrudes from the breech. A new plan then. The goblin pulls out his last trinkets. Aha, so now we get to choose. Now we get to choose something. I think I'm probably going to be sticking with a sword for the most part because I I don't know, maybe I should take the axe. Let's just take a look at it real quick. So, it ha it, it is a heavy weapon by the way. It is a heavy weapon, so Perform a powerful strike that causes 250% damage on a single target when activated. This requires 6 hits. And against corrupted enemies, Bash causes additional damage to armored. So it has armor breaker. And Bash deals additional damage to armor and enemies while they block. Susceptible to evade. Cannot repost. Hmm, interesting. I, I'm not entirely sure whether we can go for that. Maybe we'll go for something... Ooh, this requires 10 hits. Against Northerners, Repost deals 125% damage. Can Repost between enemy combo attacks. I think that might just be better for us in the long run, so let's just do that. Yes, I would like to equip it. A wise choice. Now I must go. There are many others I must visit before I can rest. The goblin runs off into the night, his fox wig flapping in the evening breeze. We can change equipment in the inventory, but we've already equipped our sword, so it's not really necessary. Your journey through a forest is interrupted by an inquisitive child. Are you searching for the forest folk? My uncle says that they used to walk these woods giving out gifts. I want to find one and ask for a lemon cake. As they dash off to peer under a nearby log, the child shouts back. Remember, if you meet the forest folk, get me a lemon cake. In the other direction, an eerie song hands, hangs in the air. You attempt to find its origin. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, let's try and see whether I can actually do a little bit better this time. I think this one's success. You follow the song through thicket and stream until you find an open glade bathed in golden sunlight. You find an aged maiden, her posture bent like the boughs of a forest. It has been twelve winters since I had a visitor. Her voice is a whisper, yet it thunders in your ears. You may visit me when you are in need, adventurer. This oh, there we go. Now, now we get that token. If you lose the challenge, you have earned this token. Yes, that's a new card as far as I'm aware. Nothing could be more fitting now than meeting the mage who started this all. Or at least, started it all for you. A trail of fallen trees and distraught farmers leads you to the thieves who had stolen your amulet. It seems their infighting has only gotten worse. The bandits surround their former leader, weapons drawn. Everyone will get their fair share. There's no need for violence, the leader implores. We ever heard of a thief talk about fair shares, spits one. You turn up and boss us around, we've barely stabbed anyone. It's been days since I've stabbed anyone. Days, someone. <laughs> the leader notices you approaching and waves you over. As much as I'd love to continue this conversation regarding stabbings, I'm afraid I have urgent business with my associate here. As he greets you, he whispers, Keep me alive and there'll be plenty of gold for your trouble. Tell him gold cannot replace the enemy that he stole. Tell him he will pay in blood for his thievery. Uh, hmm, hey. Yes, well, I, I guess the amulet. He holds up a finger. First rule of negotiation, never let them know what you want. 
Kill my associates and I will gladly return your amulet. Ever reliable, the thieves draw their blades to mug you. The leader hurries away to hide. I actually thought he was going to help us for a second. Give us your stuff or we'll stab you up, growls one of them. You consider your options. Give them all your food and gold? <laughs> no. Are you serious? I will never do that. Fight them. You draw your weapon and prepare to deal with the miscreants. Yeah, there's a tip. Perform a quick repost by attacking immediately after defending an enemy attack. Alright, let's do this. I'm prepared. And oh my, yes. It's very, very fast-paced. Gotta say that. The defense is quite tricky to get a handle on, especially when they are kind of unblockable sometimes. Okay, I should probably dodge around a little bit more, I guess. And maybe do a little bit more bashing. Ooh! Ow! That hurt. Ah, uh, okay. So some of their attacks are actually unstoppable, so you cannot stagger them infinitely like you could in the previous game. That's good to know. That is good to know. I'm taking it way too much damage, i got to say. Still getting used to the combat system, obviously. This is basically the third ever fight that I've done in the new version. With the battle resolved, the thief leader nods in approval at the carnage before him. He holds out a hand. The name is Malaclips, bard extraordinaire. His smile fades under your withering glare. Sensing your anger, he raises his hands in surrender. Wait, let's not be hasty. We're on the same side here, and I'm, I'm an upstanding citizen, just like you. I've been working with the thieves, yes, but only for the greater good. No, really, they were killing people before I came along. I know it seems bad, but look. He pulls out an amulet from his pockets and presses it into your hands. All is forgiven, yes? You stare at the amulet. It does not look familiar. Oh, Malaclip says, scratching his head. He opens a small satchel. So, which one is yours? Oh, we have no idea. Yeah, I, I guess it's just going to give us some rather nice abilities, perhaps. So, we have a lion, a pharaoh, a bull, and an eagle, I assume. So, I guess we're just going to pick the pharaoh. The Sun King amulet, that suits you. Very similar facial structure. Say, you know what? I'm lonely. You're lonely? We should work together. You have befriended Malaclips the trickster. That sounds cool. We should probably get to know one another, seeing as we're going to be friends for life, Malaclip says. Tell me, where are you from? And this is the new portion. This is the character customization. So, in other words, we can select our appearance. Yes. Oh, wow. There's actually quite a few different choices here. I guess I'm going to pick... Uh, I, I have no idea. I guess I'll just pick this. And now we can pick a hairstyle as well. Yeah, limited options at the moment, but you never know. Might be adding some more. And I think we're going to be going for that. And, oh yeah, we can also pick the, oh uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely perfectly fine doing the Sun King amulet. I think that's, that's good. And you can pick different colors. I, I didn't obviously see that beforehand, so let's pick a, let's pick a fun color like, ooh, jet black. That looks pretty cool. And what is this? Choose an outfit color. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go with this. That seems pretty striking to me. From the Reach, eh? You don't say. Good swords from the Reach, very trusting. Oh, by the way, I mean, uh, we friend owe money to Vignus of the Thieves Guild. He's quite angry at us. We should journey to Maya Bridge together to appease him. Some gold might help. Although, come to think of it, I'm rather busy. Malaclip's eyes a pretty trader hiking up the road. So, it'd be best if you get the gold and I meet you there. Oh. He is a trickster, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, so what have we gotten ourselves into? 
Okay, so get Let gold for Vigilus. You are strong, clever, wise. The circumstances under which you come here put the lie to that. I actually have no idea, but look at this. If we win this, we will be getting 10 gold. And I don't know how much gold we need for Vignus, so I guess we're going to find that out as time goes on. But if we can win this gold, then we have a better chance of appeasing him, I suppose. Right. In the first round of the competition, your opponent is the diminutive Roland, a halfling from a traveling troop of acrobats. Right, so here we go, we get to move it. Another small game embedded in our game. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's let's throw them. Oh, that was actually pretty decent. That was a pretty decent roll. Victory. You are learning. Roland is no match for your strength. He gives a disappointed backflip off the table and collects his meager winnings, then cartwheels out the door. You take your award from the purser on the way out the tavern. When you return, you will compete in the next round for a larger prize. Now, this is where we can select our path. I'm not entirely sure where to go, so I guess we should just go straight onward. The roads have become even more deadly since the Empire has come to power, despite their promises of the opposite. Ah, here we go. We have another dice target. Now, we were quite lucky to get our dice target last time, but they do give you two rolls, so it is quite likely that you'll be able to at least reach 10, 12, maybe even 15. The road ahead is blocked by an overturned carriage and a woman calling for help. Please help, she cries. I've been robbed by a band of thugs. Is there anything you can do? Yeah, that's a sister. All right, so here we go. This is, uh, let's do it. It's probably not going to work out too well. I got a six. I got two skulls. Ah, oh, that is not good. Choose which dice to reroll. Well, obviously one of these and these. I don't really need to reroll this one. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. What did I get? Oh, I got another snake eyes. Oh, wow. Dice are fair, and thus you have lost this round. That's really unlikely, but, well, unlucky for us. Unlucky for the distressed woman as well, because unfortunately we're not able to help. Ah. Why, thank you. Now if you would be so kind as to give me all of your gold. The woman draws a pair of concealed blades from her corset. Come on out, boys. <laughs> I couldn't help doing it in that voice, yes. You have no time to react as a group of bandits spring from hiding. Four of them, in actual fact. That's great. Uh, yeah, well, I guess it gives me an opportunity to get a little bit better at the combat. And I need to just be, shall we say, a little bit more proactive when it comes to the reposting, I suppose. Every hero must have a heroic sword by their side. This, however, is utterly ordinary. Yes. Great. All right, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to get used to this eventually. They do actually start winding up their animation so you can start oh, so you can start getting in you know, in preparation for when they attack. I'm going to start stunning them every so often as well because that does force them to launch a counterattack, which is pretty good. Because if you can kind of take advantage of the fact that they are going to counterattack at some point, then you're going to have a slight advantage. That was a much better combat scenario, though. I only took a little bit of damage that time. With the thugs defeated, you search their bodies for valuables. Oh no, more rolls. Okay, I, I'm literally just going to... There we go. <laughs> it seems like a small roll is a little bit better than a very, very large roll, so let's not use so much strength next time. You find some food amongst their possessions. We're gaining three food. Nice. Oh, actually, six food. That's very good. All right, so I'm going to continue onward. Celebrations in aid of what? You see how quickly the actions of the usurper are turned into tales for children. Ah, we have the carnival card. Nearing the sleepy hamlet of Dulwich, you find the villagers in the midst of some kind of celebration. Much of the activity concerns a large paper and wood statue depicting a fearsome warrior looming triumphantly over a prone lizard man. 
Uh, yeah. Follow the parade, I suppose. The parade ends in the town square. You watch as the villagers take turns, smashing the statue with a club and gathering the food and gold that spills out. A local notices your interest and asks if you would like a turn. Let's join in. Huge success, please. I would love huge success right now. Let's just... Uh, oh, yeah, I can't get that. But success is fine. The club strikes the chest of the treat-laden beast. Some gold falls out. You survey the spoils and try to scoop them up before anyone else can. Oh, no. Okay, one of these. Yep, there we go. <laughs> 20 gold. That's what we like. You scramble to gather the bounty that you unleashed. Would you like to try to gather more? Yes, no? Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Let's try it. This is our first run, after all, so it, we might as well take as many risks as we can. You survey the spoils and try to scoop them up. Okay, so here we go. Oh, my. I don't know which one it is. Oh, we did it. <laughs> oh, that was lucky. That was very lucky. You leave the town celebrations with whatever you've gathered. All right, so I'm not going to go back. I'm going to go forward. Here we come to the end of the beginning. Running errands for mages. This will become a theme, I dare say. Oh, a theme, you say? Oh, okay. You arrive at Mirebridge as the sun begins to dip below the horizon. You find Malaclubs perusing a selection of cheeses by the market. Ah, if it isn't my good friend the adventurer, did you bring the gold? Vignus has arranged to meet at the graveyard. Uh, fine. Let's go to the graveyard then. You wonder whether the spot was chosen for its seclusion or for easy body disposal. Vignus greets Malaclips with a sly grin. Looks like you turned up after all and with a lackey in tow. We had our doubts, you know. Vignus cracks his knuckles and giggles. Well, uh, giggles? <laughs> cracks his knuckles and giggles, okay. Well now, Malaclips, convince me. What's to stop me cutting off your head today? You reveal your gold as Malaklep scrounges in his pockets for some too. The heavy satchel of riches lands at Vignus's feet, with a thud that echoes through the silence of the cemetery. That's our deal done, Malaklep says, worry obvious in his voice. No need for any further troubles. I'm sorry, Mal, Vignus grins. You should have known the guild was never going to let you pay with cash stolen from our members in the first place. Oh dear. So here's a boss fight. This is obviously the boss fight, and I don't know what he's all about, but he's obviously a thief, and that is maybe going to make things a little bit easier, because I do know some of the other enemies from the previous iteration of the game were very difficult. He seems to... oh my. He seems to breathe fire. Vignus the Crazed, treacherous and greedy, a dangerous combination. Anarchists throw flaming bombs that cause fire damage. Your armor is no use to you here. All right, this is interesting. Okay, so just got to avoid that. Uh, I guess what I'm going to do is try and take out all of the enemies first. I suppose. And, well, all, <laughs> all of the enemies. That's, that's obvious. I do need to take out all the enemies, but I'm probably going to try and deal with the adds first, if you know what I mean. The extras, shall we say. Ow. Okay, that deals quite a bit of damage. Oh. Okay. Just just chill. Chill, guy. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Finishing move, I like it. That's new. Oh, that's cool, I like it. Okay, so you have, I think, combo finishes or combat finishes, and then you also have the execution move at the end. Malaclips is, well, Malaclips scratches his chin thoughtfully. It seems you could do with someone savvy to help you navigate these tricky matters of diplomacy. Like, maybe killing everyone wasn't the best idea. Come, let us discuss our partnership over an ale or two. 
Apparently we've... I, I think we've done a pretty decent job. I mean, we saved his life, after all. Well done. You have cleared the first challenge. And now we can move on to the next. Ah, so here we go. Let's reveal our new cards. Cardinal Blade and Bastion of Purification. Oh, we also have a bunch of other things. Market Thief, Tarts, Pies, and Exotic Lies, Fork in the Road, and Arm Wrestling. Malaclipse's Problem, and the Trickster card. For Finding the Forest Folk, we gain the Old Maiden. Welcome to my challenges. Together, we will traverse 22 paths of wisdom and despair in the hope of awakening. So there we have it. We have completed the Fool and the next one is the Magician. So if you enjoyed this, then by all means, let me know. Leave a comment and a like if you so desire. If you don't, then maybe just check out the Steam Store page, which is linked in the description. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.